say it's okay, but you know. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good to see you today. Hope you all had a nice week. Well, we still end the weekend, but continue your weekend. Pray for your week ahead. And if you would, let's, uh, let's all stand to page number 40, please. And from wherever you're from, we're going to sing, Are You Washed or Are You Washed? However you want to sing it. Okay, page 40. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse. <coughs> to Jesus for the cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the Lamb are you fully trusting in his grace this hour you washed in the blood of the Lamb are you washed in the blood in the soul Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? <coughs> in the crucified, are you washed in the blood of the We're glad to have you this morning, ones that are home. We're glad that you tuned in as well. So let's go, Lord, in prayer, if you will, and we'll start off. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're able to assemble ourselves together. And, oh Lord, we just pray that you would continue protecting us and watching over us. and Guide and direct us today and give us a good day. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. Uh, we do have some prayer requests. You probably already know most of them, but we just uh, remind you and, and, of course, pray for them uh, this morning as well. Uh, Dwayne Bruner is scheduled to go home from rehab on Tuesday, but his uh, three grandchildren and their parents have the uh, COVID-19, and so I don't know about that, and so... I'll just have to wait and see and pray concerning that, that uh, the uh, uh, children and, and the parents would be okay. And then Debbie Ratliff, uh, she's been quarantined and uh, she wants uh, us to pray concerning uh, the welfare of Annabelle's care, uh, being quarantined and all like that. So uh, pray concerning that, if you will. And then Ryan Clark's sister, Mariah, has a brain tumor and certainly we want to uh, lift her up in prayer as well. And then Cindy has a strained back, back pain and things like that. And so just pray concerning her. And then uh, Dan and Patsy Kurtz, uh, they have real serious uh, uh, health problems and uh, just continue to pray for them. And then Jean and Lillian Rogers, uh, health problems as well as developed there. So we just pray you continue praying for them. And Stephen Jenkins' granddaughter is pregnant, and uh, she has a COVID-19 as well. So pray concerning that. Living in California, right? Yes. yes, okay. 
pray for, uh, concerning that. And then Chad uh, Garrett is having a, a MRI and, and a, biopsy, a, a biopsy on the uh, ankle. And so uh, I pray concerning that, if you will, all the things come back okay. And then May, uh, Megan uh, Adkins, uh, her dad is, uh, has serious uh, problems as well with health. And so uh, continue praying uh, for them. And then Mason's uncle and then the daughter has COVID-19 as well. And, and I believe that they are coming back from West Virginia today. And so uh, pray for their safety and pray for their well-being. And uh, as well, and of course, as always, we want you to continue praying for our church praying for one another, praying for the pastor leaders uh, of our church and that the Lord the will will be done and uh, protect us from uh, the virus that is going around. And, and you know, we've been blessed of the Lord so far. And, and uh, it, you know, it just seems like it's uh, continuing on and on and on. And uh, I believe the, by, probably about the only way that we'll get out of this is have a, a vaccine uh, to take care of the problem. So uh, uh, just pr uh, continue praying concerning that, if you will. And then also pray for our country uh, and uh, uh, that the Lord's will will be done concerning the president and all the leadership of our country and uh, praying for the state of Indiana. And our, our state is a, is a leader. Did you know that? That uh, every, every uh, governor and things are looking to our state uh, for how in the world uh, do we ha keep finances and things in order and having the rainy day uh, 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 place where that we can uh, delve into. And so uh, we're a leader in, in concerning that. And so just continue to pray that it will continue as well. And then, of course, police and military pray uh, concerning them and our missionary. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, I want to say uh, Philistines again, but Celestines in the Granada. And then the Clarks in your bulletin uh, have their, a prayer letter from them. And so uh, read that, if you will, and pray for them this week. Uh, that the Lord's will will be done. Any a, a, a new um, prayer requests oh, in this section here? Anyone? Anyone? I think uh, be your sister. Joanne Patton. Okay, pray for her if you will. Anybody else? How about in this section? Yes, Barbara. Bless her heart. She's having problem after problem, and she they need to definitely pray concerning her. Anybody else in this section? Anyone? How about the far section? Okay, let's. Okay. Oh, okay. The second son, gallbladder removed late last night. Yes, Dave. Okay. All right. Okay. Look, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, Dwayne Bruner's uh, other son had gallbladder surgery uh, late last night. And then Blair has back problems. Blair has back problems. So, okay. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we can come to you and, and we have that privilege of coming at any time to the throne of grace and uh, dear God, we, we need your grace. We need your mercy upon us. And Lord, I, I just pray that you might protect us and watch over us. And for the ones that have been mentioned this morning, 
we lift their name up to you and, and Lord, that you would intervene in their heart and life and you would uh, just uh, heal their body, touch them, Lord, and uh, pray that you would uh, uh, help them with their spiritual needs, Lord. They'd look to you for guidance and direction. And Lord, we just pray that your precious will will be done. For we do ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, Brother Dave. Okay, if you would, let's stand, turn the page, or well, stay seated, I'm sorry. Turn to page 125, please. 125, Jesus is coming again. We'll sing the first and third verse, first and last verse. Page 125. <clears throat> Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, wonderful word of the King. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate that. Uh, as we continue our study in 1 Thessalonians, let me remind you, uh, if you will, about this very thing. Uh, what uh, the Apostle Paul is writing to the Thessalonican people, they are hearing this for the very first time. And, of course, if you've been around our church for any period of time uh, at all, and you've uh, uh, studied along with us and different things like that, heard preaching. Uh, you know, we are, uh, we're familiar with the things that the uh, Thessalonians are learning for the first time. But, you know, just because we know them uh, is no, no, uh, uh, no reason for us to be reminded about the things that are taking place at Thessalonica. And, and of course, uh, by uh, repetition and, and uh, by reminder of the things that are taking place, uh, then that's the way that we learn. And then not only that, but that's the way uh, that we become steadfast in what we believe. And, and uh, you know, the... Uh, the, the, the illustration that's always been given, I guess, down through the years is this. You know, you didn't go over your multiplication tables one time and then expected to know all about the, the multiplication tables. It, it was a repetition thing. Uh, you know, your ones and twos and threes and on, on, uh, on and on you go until you got them down uh, in your mind and in your heart where the, 
uh, that you uh, probably now don't even have to think about very much about the multiplication table because uh, they are implanted in your mind and things like that. So just because uh, we are looking at some things that we probably are familiar with, again, it's always good to go back and repeat and have repetition and, and learning from that, being reminded. You know, I was reading uh, about Jesus and the parables, and uh, he told the disciples, uh, you know, I can't quote it verbatim. I, I should have wrote it down, the verse and things like that. Uh, but he was telling the disciples about the mysteries of the parables. And he said this, that if you do not uh, hear it, and not only hear it, uh, but if you do not learn, then you will lose it. And, and that is so true. And he was teaching them parables uh, that they needed to learn and get into their, into their heart. And then if they would just leave it, uh, then they would lose that. Uh, knowledge that they have and you know that is true uh, in our life as well uh, when we learn a truth uh, from the word of God uh, we we must continue thinking about it every now and again and uh, becoming more knowledgeable of it and then maybe going into greater depth uh, than what you you started with I've always been of the opinion this that you just do not unload on new believers everything that is written in the Bible uh, because they won't remember it. But if you just continue, if they continue uh, reading and, and learning from the Word of God, then it becomes part of you. And so uh, we see that over, again, these verses of Scripture are probably familiar to you. Uh, but let's not get to the point where they said, well, I've heard that, I don't, I don't need that, or, or something like that. But you do. It's, it's from the Word of God. It's God's Word. And any time that we have God's Word, uh, then we, we need to uh, pay attention to it. We need to learn it and then build upon uh, our knowledge of what we have in the Lord. And if you would turn in your Bible, First Thessalonians chapter, uh, chapter uh, uh, three, if you will, uh, look at verse uh, four. Uh, we've already covered that, uh, but th that is a leader into uh, verse five. And so it says, "For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that you, we uh, we should suffer tribulation." even as it come to pass, and ye, uh, ye, and ye know. And so he's talking about the, uh, the uh, problems that they're going to have, the trouble that is going to be there, and they've already experienced some of them. Paul has told them what happened uh, back at Philippi and some of the other places, how that they were persecuted, and when they left there, come to Thessalonica, they followed them, and then, of course, the persecution continued. And so the Apostle Paul is just says, I told you before about this, and uh, you should suffer tribulation uh, even as it comes to pass. As it comes upon you, uh, and then uh, you know. You know what to expect uh, when we look at it from that viewpoint. And even today, we are not immune from persecution and things of that nature. Uh, I, I believe that we'll go through uh, uh, quite a bit more uh, and maybe severely. I, I do not know. There's no way of knowing. Uh, you know, our country is changing so rapidly and, and uh, not for the good. And so uh, any, anything is possible and we ought to know that and, and be on guard about that. And of course it says in verse 5, for this cause, the reason why you need to know that is for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor be in vain. And so Paul just says, you know that you're going to be 
uh, suffering and, and uh, tempted and, and all like that, and you're going to suffer tribulations and, and different things like that. Uh, but I just want to know about what you are doing. He was concerned that they were going to give up, uh, that they were going to quit uh, by uh, the, uh, the enemies uh, that uh, was coming upon them the devil-inspired people that were coming up on them uh, would influence them to give up and to go back into their old way of living and the things that they, they had come out of. And, of course, that's part of sanctification. When a person gets saved, uh, they are set apart by, by the Holy Spirit. We'll see that in a few moments. Uh, but we see that the, the Bible telling us uh, that we are to uh, not give up uh, we, in fact, we're to stand fast in the things of the Lord. And, of course, he says, I want to know uh, your faith. I, I want to know how you are uh, standing up under all of the pressures and things that you're under. And, uh, you know, it, uh, it wasn't really a, a pleasant time for the believer, uh, you know, back then because of all the things that were going on, everything that was thrown at them and persecution because they had left their old life. And it says, uh, lest by some mean the tempter has tempted you and our labor be in vain. And so he said, don't quit. Uh, if, if you begin to fall away from what you believe, uh, then it's going to be all in vain. Uh, the church will not continue. And certainly they needed a, a church there in that part of the country the world, uh, where that it would be an influence upon others. And, and this is, uh, to, uh, to me, uh, the model church, the model church at, at, that we look to uh, for, uh, well, everything, what they believe and how, how soon they learned everything like that and, and what they were going through and, and different things of that nature. And so Paul says, I want to know uh, concerning your faith I want to know how you're sta uh, uh, standing under all the pressures that you have and not to give up. If you'd give up, then it would be in vain. And, and, uh, and so he's uh, saying, I'm glad to hear. And then it says in verse 6 here, and, and really in verse 7, uh, but we'll look at verse 6, it says, uh, But now when Timotheus came from you to us and brought unto us good tidings for your faith, and charity that ye have, all, uh, have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also uh, to see you. And then in verse 7, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all your, our, our afflictions and distress by your faith. And so here we find in these two, uh, two verses, uh, Paul sent uh, Timothy to... Thessalonica. Now Timothy is returning back to, to report to the Apostle Paul how things were going at the church. And of course, the, 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 uh, uh, Paul was delighted. He was comforted to know everything was all right. Everything that was all right. And then not only that, but it said there uh, that in verse 7 it says, And we comfort over you in all your uh, affliction and distressed by your faith. And so we see that Paul was comforted to know that they were continuing in all of the afflictions that they had uh, come under and the stress of their faith. You know, have new believers sometimes are influenced by different means and different ways through family, friends, and foe, or whatever it might be uh, coming upon them. And it's a really a a distressful time uh, for a believer. And then, of course, when they begin to know uh, what God says, uh, then they, uh, they, have a, uh, they, they have a foot uh, a footnote there to be able to withstand when they get something solid to stand on. And, and uh, that is what is happening uh, to the Thessalonican people. They were getting grounded. They were maturing in the things of the Lord. And, and so uh, Paul was comforted knowing uh, that uh, they were uh, overcoming the afflictions and the stress, and their faith 
was uh, strong. It was strong. And then it says in verse 8, For now we live, if you stand fast in the Lord. In other words, Paul is saying, the church will live on when you take a stand. And that is so true. And I think I mentioned this a week or two ago, maybe last week. I can't remember. Uh, But you know, uh, churches are closing. And it's because people that belong to that church had not taken a stand and, and to, uh, withstood everything that was going their way. And you know, as uh, I, I know and you know as well, uh, how that uh, things can happen and things are not always good. Uh, but you know, there's no way in the world uh, that you could bail out. Uh, if you are a, a believer and wanted to, the church to continue, uh, then you must stay with it. Uh, you must stand fast in, in the things uh, that, uh, that the Lord has given to you. And so the Apostle Paul, it says, For now we live if you stand fast in the Lord. Uh, the church will continue on if you stand fast in the Lord. And that is so true in the day in which we are living. And then uh, the, the Bible says the church would continue uh, there and stand fast if they remain uh, true to the word of God. And then look at verse 9, if you will. For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all, for all the joy wherewith we uh, joy for your sake, uh, for your sakes before our, our God. Night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might, might perfect that which is lacking in your, in your faith. And so here we see that Paul had a, a deep compassion for them. Why would that be? This is the first church that Paul planted in that part of the country. And so definitely they, he had a... a a real compassion for those believers and what they were going through at that particular time. And so we see that Paul just simply gave thanks uh, to, and, uh, and counted it a, a joy to be able to serve along with these people. And of course, uh, Paul was the example, Timothy and Silas were the example uh, that uh, how to serve the Lord. In, in what way, in what position, different things like that, that they could serve the Lord in, in successful, and, and of course, that's the one way that we learn how to serve the Lord today, uh, through reading the Word of God, through watching other people, older believers, and seeing what they do, and, and different things like that, and, and of course, uh, knowing uh, that they are interested in the new believer, as Paul was here in these verses, and he gave thanks to the Lord. And, of course, we see that he, he says in verse 10, and we find that it says, Night and day praying exceedingly that, you might see, that we might see your face and might uh, perfect that which is lacking in your faith. And so we see that the Apostle Paul at different times prayed for these people. And, and, of course, he was wanting them uh, for a particular reason. They, he wanted to see their face, and then not only that, but he might uh, uh, help them to mature uh, in, in, in a way that would be pleasing to the Lord. The, the, uh, the term used might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Paul didn't expect them to be uh, uh, perfect in everything, but the word was used to a way uh, that they would be maturing in the things of the Lord. Um, you know, a good thing to uh, ask maybe at the end of the year, or the first of the year, or whatever, we're coming down to the close of the year. Uh, but uh, how are you maturing uh, this year? Uh, are you maturing more than you did last year? Are you uh, digressing, or what are you doing? Are you... Uh, you know, nobody stands firm. Well, I'm the same as I was. No, you either digress or you progress. And so we see that uh, they were uh, encouraged to progress 
in the faith and continue to uh, grow. Uh, and uh, he would help them along with Silas and, and, uh, and Timothy uh, to help them to perfect their faith, uh, help them to grow in, in their faith in the Lord. And, and that is important uh, for us to continue to grow every day of our life. And, of course, the way that we do that is studying the Word of God, continue being in the Word of God. Uh, you know, I, I think I've told you this, but growing up, I wasn't a real good student. I, in fact, I didn't like to study at all. And then, lo and behold, in the latter part of my year, that's all I do is study, 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 and, and uh, trying to uh, in, in, uh, progress in what I believe and different things like that. Uh, but, you know, it's a continual thing. Uh, a lot of people are satisfied when they get saved, and they said, that's it. I'm not moving any farther. I'm not going any farther than that. And they think that's okay. But that's not according to the Word of God. We must progress in our Christian life. And so we see that he, he was praying for them night and day and uh, that they would see him, uh, see their face, and then helping them continue along. Wanted to uh, uh, be with them. And, you know, the best way of, of learning is a face-to-face uh, uh, repetition of what is going on. And Paul wanted to see the, their face and then uh, help them to mature in the things of the Lord. And then in verse 11, uh, we see that uh, the Bible telling us here, it says, Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. And so Paul is saying, uh, we're, we're praying concerning uh, that we would, uh, God would, Open a way up for us to come. You'll remember uh, that Paul wanted to see them, uh, but they, uh, that the Satan had hindered uh, them from coming in various ways. Uh, we're not told in what way or anything like that. Uh, but then here we find it says, direct our way unto you. They wanted to come back and be able to teach them and help them in the work of the Lord and, and to continue. And then we see that in verse 12 uh, that uh, it says there, And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one towards another and towards all men, even as we do towards you. And so here we find that Paul also prayed, that they would increase and abound in love for one another and then for all people as well. How many times have we seen that in Scripture? Over and over again, the, uh, the Lord Jesus uh, taught the disciples and, and uh, the disciples taught others uh, to love one another. And, you know, it, it, uh, it's a continual thing uh, that we are reminded about how that we are to love the brethren and on and on we could go. But it says uh, they would increase and bound in love, abound in love towards one another. It would continue to grow. It would not just be stifled, but it would continue to grow to, and, and growing together. And then we see that not only that, uh, but he says uh, the reason why that we want you to love one another and all men to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. And so uh, he, we see here in this verse of Scripture, in the last, last verse of this uh, uh, chapter 3, uh, we see that Paul wanted the Lord to establish them, it, uh, it establish their heart, and the things that have been taught to them. And, and you know, uh, we can be taught things, uh, but until we get them into our heart and establish us, uh, we're, it won't do much good. But when we are established in what we believe and nobody is able to uh, move us away from that, then that's a good thing. Then you're able to stand before 
uh, whoever, the false teachers today, and, and you, you know, you'll be, be able to say, well, uh, this is what I believe, uh, you, you know, you know what you believe, but this is what I believe, and you're not going to move me from that position, and there's no use for you trying, and, and uh, good day or something like that, and, and uh, uh, just move on. And, and of course, uh, we see that he wanted to establish them unblameable in holiness before God. Now there again is sanctification, the whole, being uh, uh, in ho- unblameable in in holiness, and of course that is sanctification. That's the goal of uh, of sanctification, being set apart unto holiness and things of that nature. Uh, it says even our Father at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, being ready for the return of the Lord. Uh, we have all uh, seen about the return of the Lord uh, over and over. Uh, we're going to be in chapter four. We're going to get a little, just a little bit more of, of uh, uh, in-depth about sanctification, and then not only that, but about the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. The questions that they had is going to be answered by, uh, by the Apostle Paul and by Timothy and Silas about the, uh, the coming of the Lord, and we'll see that. But as we go into chapter 4, we find here uh, that uh, Paul, of course, has already introduced uh, to them about sanctification or being set apart. And then, of course, we see that he will continue that uh, going in and says, furthermore. And, and so we see that it, it's a continual uh, continuation from the last part of, of the chapter about sanctification. And so uh, he, he just simply says, uh, furthermore, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you. And, of course, there is the beseeching, and then not only that, but they are the exhortation. Uh, you know, uh, if one is a mild plea, the other is a more, a more of a teaching appeal to them, exhorting them uh, to live for the Lord, and, and, of course, to do the things that the Lord would have them to do under the idea of sanctification. And so here we see that they are to beseech them to grow and to walk uh, in the pleasing of the Lord. It says there, Furthermore, we beseech you and brethren and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that as ye have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God so you would abound more and more. And so here we find uh, that the Apostle Paul is just simply telling them uh, that uh, they are uh, to walk uh, in, with the Lord uh, in a way that it would be pleasing to him, walking in holiness and the things that were required of them. Paul is going to tell them uh, a little bit later on uh, what uh, they needed to do in order to walk uh, to please the Lord. And so we see there uh, that it says, uh, first of all, for you know the commandment that we gave you by, by the Lord Jesus. And so we see that it's nothing new. Uh, Paul is just repeating what the Lord had told him, and he was telling them what to do. That com- what the commandments are uh, we uh, gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. Evidently, the commandments have already been given. Uh, you, you go back and look into the New Testament and Matthew, Mark, and then through there to find out about what Paul was, was talking about. And the, the Lord had already given them information concerning that. And then it goes on to say, uh, Sanctification is the will of God. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification that you should stand from fornication. And so here we see that the Apostle Paul is, is telling them uh, the will of God for your life is to set yourself apart uh, where that you could, and you would abstain from different things. Now the word here we see that it says ye should abstain from fornication. Uh, we see that that word has meaning that it would cover everything 
that would be displeasing to the Lord. For instance, they were not to go back into idol worship. They were, you know, definitely there was a pull back to go back into idol worship and things like that. A go back into immorality, the way that they had grown up. And of course, we see it was, it, it, this is in the same area as Corinthian. And of course, you know the problem at, Cor- uh, at Corinth. Uh, they, were, uh, they were immoral and, and things like that, and the Apostle Paul had to remind them about it. But these people are hearing this for the very first time, and of course, we've heard that over and over again. Uh, but we need to pay attention to it, and it says we should abstain from, uh, from fornication. And, and, of course, uh, we see that he goes on to say uh, how to, how to, uh, you should know how to possess your vessel. In other words, you know, should know how to control your body, your conduct, and different things of that nature. And so it says, for every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. And so we see uh, that we keep our body in subjection and to, to the Lord, the will of God for our life. And then we see that in verse 5 uh, where it says, Not in the lust of concupiscence, uh, even as the Gentiles which, uh, which know not. And the, uh, the word uh, concupiscence is uh, the idea of lustful desire. It it covers everything, the lustful desire of of an individual. And so uh, we see here uh, the word meaning that, and then, of course, it goes on to say, uh, and, of course, evidently, they were wanting to go back, or it may have been uh, the Apostle Paul was having a uh, preventing thing, where that they would not want to go back into the... uh, into the old life instead of being holy and things like that, being set apart by God, that they would not have a desire to go back and to do those things. I, I do not know. Uh, maybe some of them had fell and, and went back into the old life. I, I simply do not know about that. But we see here in verse 6 that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter because that the Lord is avenger of all, and as we also have forewarned you and testified. And so here we find in verse 6, they were not to defraud. Now what does the word defraud mean? Uh, Usually you you think about different things. Uh, It has the idea uh, that you are not uh, coveting uh, things that your neighbor has in any manner, any way. Uh, that uh, maybe the neighbor has something better than you and you covet it and, and, uh, and things of that nature and then you try to get greedy uh, with it and then you want it and, and uh, things of that nature. Uh, they're not to do that. Uh, you know, I don't know about other people, uh, but it, uh, I, 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 I drove Cadillac or, or uh, Lincoln. And I got more trouble out of that than anything else. But I've never uh, made it an issue if a believer was driving a Cadillac or a Lincoln or whatever uh, to be covetous of that. I've never, I, I just thank God that they are able to drive it. And God has provided for them. I do not think any less of people and I, I don't uh, de- desire to have what they have. I, you know, I, I won't live the way that I... I uh, that the pleasing to the Lord, and the Lord gives me what I need, and things like that. And I don't. We're not to uh, try to uh, be greedy and get things other people has, and and take advantage of people, and uh, to make gain and different things of that nature. Uh, uh, that is not according to the Christian life. And then Paul reminds them, the Lord is the avenger of all such. I will repay, saith the Lord. You know that uh, verse of Scripture? And, and so he's just simply saying uh, that an avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. And, of course, that wasn't the first time 
that they had heard that, but going back over and repetition, going back over and over and continuing that. And so it's been a, a, a real process of learning for them uh, to know how to be set apart and what God expects of his will towards their life, maturing and all such. And so, um, well, our, our time is gone, but we will, we will pick up on that a little bit. Uh, well, next week we'll look at verse 7 and 8 and, and, uh, and continue, if you will. So uh, come and be with us next week and um, read, read Thessalonians. We're going into uh, chapter 5 not long and uh, continuing chapter 4. And so you, you uh, become familiar with it and we'll go over it and, and uh, maybe everyone will have understanding concerning it. Heavenly Father, we do thank you uh, for the word of God and for the blessings that you have given to us and, and how that, uh, Lord, uh, as we read the pages of your word, uh, we, we see how that you have blessed us as well and has cared for us and have uh, helped us to overcome the temptations and, and the persecutions and, and different things like that and made us strong in the Lord and help us, Lord, to stand firm and stand fast in what we believe. And, Lord, that you, we continue growing as Christians and be able to uh, help other people as well and encourage other in the faith and help the young believers the new believers, and, and Lord, uh, be patient with them. And Father, we just pray your will will be done, for we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you're dismissed.